Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Joe. Uh, so, um, so today what we wanted to do was show a demo of some of the subscriber provisioning workflows that we've been working on um, with um, bringing up ONUs, registering ONUs, um, authenticating users with 802.1x, and then DHCP relay. Um, and so to start with, I want to just show kind of a uh, sort of a animation of what's going on. So that's kind of easy to follow once we uh, see the details later on. Um, so this is kind of the um, high level picture of the system that we have right now. Um, in the bottom left hand side, we have the OLT, the, the PON network, um, which gets um, is controlled by Volta and abstracted as an open flow switch to, to the ONOS cluster. Um, ONOS is also controlling uh, the aggregation switching over here. Um, and then that uh, links, up, links up to the BNG, which is, in this case, is external from the CBA system. Um, we interface with it, but it's, it's an external piece. Um, so there's, uh, uh, maybe different from what you've seen earlier, there's no um, subscriber termination happening inside Zebra. This is happening in the, in the external BNG in this case. We just do the, the uh, layer 240 up to the BNG. Um, and then on the top here, we have the, the NIM, uh, which is sort of controlling and orchestrating the system and mediating uh, with external uh, systems, OSS systems. Um, and then the NIM is including XOS and then also some monitoring framework. Um, so the first workflow we we're going to show is uh, on your registration. Um, so when the when a user first comes online, they're going to plug in their ONU, um, and then that's going to sort of start communicating on the PON with the OLT. Um, so it's going to start sending messages to the OLT and, and register itself. And then the OLT is going to detect this and send an indication to Volta that a new ONU has, has come online on the PON. Volta is uh, going to then send an indication um, to ONOS. So it's going to add a, a port to the logical OpenFlow switch. Um, so Onus is going to see this as an open flow port added event. Um, and it's going to know that there's a new, a new uni port, a new subscriber that it, that it can uh, provision. And then Onus is going to send an event up to the uh, the NIM layer uh, using the Kafka bus, which says a new, a new uni was added. And at this point, the NIM um, has an opportunity to be able to uh, validate whether this is, this is a valid ONU to be allowed on the network or not. Um, and this can be either based on pre-provisioned data that exists inside of the NIM, or it can be based on uh, interacting with some external OSS system to validate the serial number of the ONU. And it has the choice to either um, allow or, or deny that ONU onto the network. It can kick it off the network if it doesn't want to, if it decides it's an invalid ONU or an ONU appearing in the wrong place. So um, following this, uh, we have, we have an, assuming we have a valid ONU, um, the ONU is connected, but there's no, there's no provisioning of data traffic, so no traffic can flow through the system. So the next workflow in this uh, that, we're, that we're showing here is the um, authentication workflow using 802.1x. Um, and this is authenticating the residential gateway behind the, the ONU. Um, so the residential gateway will be plugged into the ONU inside the residence, um, and then it would send EA port packets into the network um, to begin authenticating with uh, the network. Um, those packets will be forwarded from the ONU through the OLT, where they'll be trapped and sent up to Volta, and then sent up to ONOS um, as OpenFlow packet ins, um, where they'll come to the AAA application that exists in ONOS. AAA application is going to encapsulate those AIPOL packets in radius, um, and optionally add some more uh, fields which may describe uh, things about the users, such as their, their, their connection point to the network. Um, and that's going to send those off to the radius server. And then there's going to be an exchange between the, the supplicant, which is the residential gateway, and the radius server, um, which is being brokered by ONOS. So ONOS and the AAA application on ONOS is going to be able to understand the what the state of the authentication is for this particular user. Um, and then eventually, once the user uh, is successfully authenticated by the radius server, then the AAA application, AAA application will uh, export a authorization uh, approved event um, also over the Kafka bus, which will then be picked up by the, the NIM layer. Um, and then at this point, NIM can uh, make a call down to the OLT application on us, uh, which will then uh, uh, 
telling the OLT application to provision the subscriber VLANs. And so the OLT application will send open flow rules down to Volta, which will be sent down to both the OLT and the ONU to pass the, the um, or to configure the, the pond to um, tag this user's traffic with the right VLANs that have been assigned to this user um, and forward it up to the NNI, up to the aggregation. And then at the same time, uh, NIM will also call to the segment routing application on us to program the same thing in the, in the aggregation switching um, because the VLAN cross connect needs to be programmed between the OLT and the, the upstream BNG so that, so that the data traffic will flow through the BNG. So, Jonah? Uh, yeah. Just a couple of clarifications that I wanted to make. Uh, this, uh, this workflow that we're talking about over here um, sort of corresponds to the workflow that we have put on the CBA wiki. Uh, this is the AT&T's CBA uh, workflow. And a couple of clarifications that I wanted to make was that um, uh, what we're going to demo today uh, isn't exactly that workflow, not yet. There's a couple of pieces that are missing, but What's important here is that in the first step that Jono, when Jono showed that uh, the ONU is discovered from bottom up, um, uh, the NEM layer actually uh, has the ability to uh, disable that, as Jono had pointed out, but it only disables it if uh, the OSS, the external OSS, has not provisioned that ONU yet. So it's discovered, but not provisioned, from top down, so it's disabled until the external OSS comes in and says that, hey, bring up this ONU, at which point uh, the NEM layer can talk directly to Volta and uh, re-enable that ONU. So that's, uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is that in the 802.1x um, um, uh, workflow, as you can see that once 802.1x is uh, successful, um, and the RG has been authenticated, um, the NEM layer at that point, if it is aware of the subscriber behind uh, that RG, uh, then it goes ahead and shows, uh, does uh, what is shown on the screen over here, uh, that it, is goes, uh, it knows of the CNS VLAN tags for that subscriber, so it goes ahead and programs it in both Volta as well as the aggregation switch. But if it is not aware at that point, um, if the OSS, the external OSS, has not uh, provisioned the subscriber and the service binding for that subscriber, then uh, it, it basically waits um, uh, to hear from the external OSS before it does that programming. Okay, so it's external OSS driven for both ONU uh, validation as well as uh, subscriber uh, provision. Go ahead, John. Very cool. And so finally, once um, this step has been completed, the, the VLANs have been provisioned um, through the system up to the BNG. Um, the final step is for the residential gateway to use DHCP to retrieve an IP address from the network. Um, and so the, the RG will obviously send DHCP messages. Again, these will be sent to the OLT, trapped there, sent up to Volta, and make their way up to ONOS as a, as a packet in to the DHCP relay application running on ONOS. And in this case, we're running um, layer two DHCP relay. So the, the DHCP relay will insert um, some option 82 information into the DHCP message. Um, and then it will send it back down to Volta through, uh, with a packet out message, um, telling, it, telling Volta to send it out the OLTs in an iPort through the aggregation and up to the BNG. Um, and again, a few messages get exchanged back and forth between the IG and the BNG with the DHCP relay app in the middle. So the DHCP relay app um, understands the state machine uh, of, of the DHCP process and knows whether, they, whether the user has a valid IP address or not at this point. Um, and then when the user gets an IP address, uh, uh, we haven't shown it here, but, um, but the DHCP application will also export that as a notification on the Kafka bus and uh, NAM will be able to pick that up and, and uh, um, uh, insert that information to the state that is holding about the subscriber. Um, so that, that bit is not implemented right now, but that uh, will be implemented pretty soon. So those are the workflows that we're going to demonstrate. Um, are there any questions at this point? Are we actually using a cluster of onuses or a single onus? It's a single onus right now, and it's, okay. still, it's still actually two different onuses controlling the OLT side and the aggregation. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, 
part of the plan is to con um, not use two different onuses and um, and move to a single cluster of onuses for both uh, the ag and both. Yeah, part of the part of the question was um, the apps aren't cluster aware yet. I didn't know if that had been. Yeah, modified. that's right. So if you look at the SIBA uh, Jira board, uh, there are epics for what is known as onus consolidation. That means moving away from using two different onuses for the ag and volta. That's one epic. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another epic is for the clustered use of onus, which also means that the apps have to be changed to work in cluster mode. And is, is this demonstration essentially using the HIPPIE OS, which basically says yes to everything, or? No, so actually, uh, once, you know, once uh, John and uh, Theo go through that, uh, there are um, changes that have been made to the HIPPIE OS to essentially include a whitelist. So if uh, that whitelist has been provisioned by the external mm -hmm. OSS um, with an ONU serial number, uh, so when the ONU is discovered, it's compared against that. And if that whitelist uh, doesn't have it, then the ONU is disabled, and it waits for the external OSS to, to provision that ONU. Okay. And I, I didn't see, a, uh, maybe I missed it. Was there a reference to MCAS too? Are we just showing kind of up through AAA authentication or in unicast traffic, or is this going to do MCAS provisioning as well? Yeah, it does right now. Um, multicast is another uh, part of the workflow that has not been defined yet. Uh, it will come onto the wiki and all. There's a there's a there's a Jira for Epic for the multicast workflow, but it doesn't have any stories yet because that workflow hasn't been defined. All right, thank you. All right, cool. So at this point, the system is up. Um, all the, the software is up and running, um, but there's no OLT is provisioned and no subscribers uh, active on the system right now. And so we're going to go through the workflow of bringing, bringing those up. Um, so what, what we're looking at right here is the information that has been pre-provisioned for this particular subscriber that we're going to bring up. And in particular, the VLAN tags have been pre-provisioned. And we can see on this side that the, the user is in the pre-provisioned state. Um, and we'll see this change as, as the user goes through uh, the various workflows. Um, and we can also look at the, the HIPPIE OSS, which is the sort of um, the information about what's been discovered and what's been validated. Oh, oh actually, on this side. Um, we can see that there's uh, the, the serial number of this ONU has been added to the whitelist. So um, when this ONU is detected on the system, it will, be, it will be allowed onto the network. It won't, be, it won't be kicked off the network. It will be allowed on, and the, and the user will be able to go through their workflow. Um, so right now I'm going to go ahead and push configuration or push make a call into into the NEM layer, into XOS, which is going to start bringing up the OLT, um, and soon after that the ONU will, will be discovered. Um, so I'll make that call, and then over here, um, hopefully we can see this. Um, so over here, we see now this is the Volta CLA. Um, we see that this top line is showing the OLT device has been discovered um, as active. Um, and then also the ONU device has been detected on the network. Um, and it was discovered. And then now, um, soon after, the, the status has been switched to active. Um, so that device has been uh, activated and is enabled on the network. And then in the, this is the ONU CLI controlling the, the PON. And we can see that we can see um, a, a device uh, representing this PON network, and it has um, two ports. One is a uni port, and the other is the NNI port. So we have one uni port for this uh, for this ONU, and the NNI port for the upstream. Um, if I switch over to the NEM view, we see now that there's an instance for this HIPPIE OSS, which which got created when uh, NEM detected that um, the ONU had come up on the system. Um, and because this ONU was in the whitelist, uh, and this is what's created, and um, and it's it's in the validated state. So right now the ONU is connected to the system, um, but there's no there's been no VLANs or any data traffic provisioned um, in the system, so the user cannot access anything. Um, and if I look at this thing right here, which, which is the client um, behind the um, behind the ONU, um, it's not able to, to reach anything because there's been no traffic provision. 
Um, so the next step is for the client or for the client to start authenticating itself. Let's grab the command. Um, and I just will show that in Onos right now, we have um, no record of any authentication that's taken place. Um, but now I'm going to go to the client and basically tell it explicitly to start authenticating. Um, so it's going to send off uh, packets into the network and it's going to pretty soon see that the authentication completed successfully. If I look in the Onos CLI, I now see that it knows about a user and the state has been authorized. Um, the radio server has allowed it onto the network. And then if I go up to the NEM layer, I see that um, the service since the authentication state has been changed to approved. Um, and it's also the subscriber has now been moved from the pre-provisioned state to the enabled state. Um, and what this means is that um, the VLAN provisioning is, is now taking place. So the subscriber has been enabled and we've uh, been able to provision the VLANs um, on both the pod and the aggregation switching. If I go back into the owner side, we can see that um, the the uh, it, it knows about a subscriber. This this basically means that it it has been told about a subscriber and it's provisioned VLANs onto the onto the OLT. And you said it also provisioned uh, VLANs into the fabric. Yeah, yeah. So actually, in this setup right now, the the fabric is not there, but um, but yeah, it, it, in the same step, it would also provision VLANs into the fabric. All right, thanks. Um, and then finally, the next, uh, the, the last thing is for the client to use DHCP or retrieve an IP address. If I just look in on us, um, you can see that right now on us um, has no record of any DHCP um, interactions that are taking place. But then when I go to the client and tell it to um, DHCP, it'll, re it'll retrieve an IP address and then on us, uh, because of, because of, Onus is running the DHCP P relay, it now um, knows that a user tried to DHCP and it sees the state and the IP that it retrieved. Um, and again, and we, we would also, we haven't done this yet, but also Onus will be sending events through Kafka um, and then NEM will be able to pick them up and, and also have a record of that state. Hey, hey, uh, John, on the DHCP client, that, that command, is that, are you on the RG container or? Yeah, yeah this, is on, this is on the RG. So this client is, is basically pretending to be the RG. That's why it's doing the, the EAPOL authentication and the DHCP. Hmm. So, so that it seems that DHCP client on the, this one to our ticket, it seems working here, right? Well, is this actually in the RG container, or is this just a well, this, host? This is not the container in Bolter. This is something else that I that I made. It's just a Linux host. Okay. Okay. Um, and so at this point, the user is able to reach the BNG. That's this uh, this IP address is the BNG address, the gateway, and then also um, through the BNG, it can reach out to the internet. So. Um, is the workflow? So purposes, yeah, so yeah, go ahead. Demo, uh, for demo purposes, what um, uh, what Jono is doing is that he's you know starting the 802.1x process in this um, emulated RG. He's starting the DH client process in the emulated RG. When the real world, of course, these things will be happening uh, continuously. And uh, um, as soon as the ONU comes up and it's validated, you know. 802.1x and DHCP would happen automatically very fast right after that. Um, it's just for this demo that he's starting things one by one going through the steps of the workflow. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, otherwise it would all it would all happen in a flash, right? You wouldn't see anything. So it's just yeah. breaking the steps apart so we see one, you know, like so it says one by one what what's happening at each point. So the applications, uh, AAA application and DHCP relay application, get external information about the subscriber through the status interface today. Is that being used in this demonstration to pull data from um, NEM or, or how's that data getting to those applications? Yeah, so Ed, um, status is not pulling data from NEM right now. It's being, it's being configured using the configuration interface. But um, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. That's exactly what we need to do is to um, allow status to pull that data from NEM. Okay, so you're just pushing a net config with that information. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, thanks. But, but yeah, you're right that um, going forward, this, this data will be pre-provisioned into NEM and uh, on us, we'll pull it from that through status. So in some sense, even though we have NEM, the status will always be there. 
Right, status is local to the to the to the owners. Yeah, status is just uh, right now. It's a generic term for integration interface. Is the best way I'd explain it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, it's just a mechanism to pull data into on us, and it doesn't dictate where that data is. It could be name. It could be it could be anything. Could anything be else, right? Okay, okay. So, so yeah, okay. Cool. Any other questions? Is this using like the Quagga router to get to the outside? How's that happening? Uh, is no, that, is that all just kind of pre-configured in the deployment? Yeah, because no, right, because in this particular workflow, it's it's uh, uh, the the aggregation switch is doing a layer two forwarding, right? If it was doing a layer three termination and routing, then it would talk upstream using Quagga to you know an, a, a router. Um, so in a different okay. workflow, not the at and workflow, but in a different workflow, we are doing exactly that. Um, but in the at and workflow, it's layer two forwarding through the aggregation switch going to an external BNG, and then there's no need for uh, Quagga or the, the beat router capability that uh, the aggregation switch has. All right. And I was going to ask another question about Fabric. I forgot that we're not using that. I was curious if you're... You've got a workflow both with the OFTPA fabric as well as the P4 fabric, or just OFTPA? Uh, well, no, right now it's just OFTPA, but uh, right. uh, there are plans uh, um, the, the fabric will be P4 enabled by the end of the year. Yep, very cool, thanks. Sooner, actually, sooner than that, but uh, yeah, just plan. So, so right now on this for the demo, you're only using the CVLAN. So there's no SVLAN. Uh, the only single tag. Uh, there is an SVLAN. It's just um, it kind of, it's kind of hidden because it doesn't. It, uh, so the Audience has been built um, based on the PMC or Celestica workflow, right, where you have a single SVLAN per OLT. And so it's not configured per subscriber. It's configured per OLT. Okay. Uh, so if I look at the OLTs, um, you can see this is the one. That we are using, and the VLAN is here. Do, 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 do. So that's the CV. Uh, that's the SVLAN for this OLT. So is um, this still is this still part of the netconfig file? Yeah, this is this is netconfig. Um, but I I saw that um, recently there's, there's been a change to pull this from status as well. Okay. But but the the bigger change that we need is that um, we need to to allow on us to to be able. Well, I think what we're gonna do is um, when yeah, SVLAN can be configured, right? Yeah, per subscriber. So when you when you configure a subscriber, you configure both the C and S VLAN. Right, and then S VLAN should be on. I mean, they they yeah. As long as the northbound provided, then I think that's all you care. Just northbound yeah, provided. Yeah, exactly. All right. So do we want to switch to the second demo? Thanks, Joe. Yeah, it's actually two parts of the same demo. Uh, it's um, you know the, it, we're not showing a different infrastructure. It's the same infrastructure, the same schema part that's being used to show uh, the, some of the FCAPS functionality as well. Um, so, yeah. Dale, you know, I can share my screen. Okay. Um, so the second part of the demo is about starting collecting FCAPs from uh, the system. Uh, so as per the document we shared uh, last week, we started experimenting with, uh, with this solution where everything uh, is being, being pushed to Kafka. And from there, depending on the kind of information, it can go either to uh, Elasticsearch or uh, Prometheus, and then it goes through a Kibana dashboard. Uh, what we are going to see today uh, are the statistics that Volta um, is pushing to Kafka at the moment. That's not the definitive format, uh, um, so take this as an experimental. But uh, Volta is pushing some information like um, packet in, packet out, and number of bytes transmitted uh, uh, from the OLT and uh, ONU uh, into Kafka. Uh, we have an exporter that listens um, for those events in Kafka and transform them from the format in which they are exposed on Volta to uh, a format that Prometheus can understand, uh, and then we are visualizing them in um, 
uh, in Kibana. Um, so if I go to the dashboard, I'm seeing that uh, from the OLT, from the ping that John did before, uh, we had a small amount of traffic that is going uh, through our, um, our OLT device. We are seeing two devices here because uh, uh, Prometheus will keep track of all the devices um, uh, that he ever knew about. Uh, so the green device was the one from a previous run. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to download a, a big file from the client uh, to emulate some traffic and we'll see uh, and, and soon we'll see the traffic uh, going up. So the demo is very, very contained, but it's to demonstrate that uh, we can fetch uh, information from uh, from Volta and store them and make them uh, available for uh, for consumption. So the open OLT adapter is pushing uh, stats onto the Kafka bus that is picked up by the named Kafka infrastructure and displayed. Yes. Right there. So we see that now the traffic is uh, uh, is going up. This is a very simple counter that is counting all the megabytes that have gone through the uh, the device and the number of packets. But we can uh, also get some uh, information uh, and some alarm uh, just through the Prometheus uh, query language. We can see uh, the amount of traffic that is going through the device at the moment. And if I stop the download, so this is the NNI port you showing? Yeah, I'm showing traffic on the NNI port. Uh, and I stopped the download right now. So in, uh, in about 10, 15 seconds, we'll see that the traffic is going down to zero. Uh, I set an example alarm that was saying if I have more than five megabytes um, traffic in a span of 30 seconds, uh, send me a notification so we can see that it's highlighted in red. Uh, and as soon as the traffic goes uh, below the accepted uh, limit, it will come back to green. Uh, now, this alarm is not plumbed in any kind of notification, but there is support for a uh, uh, for many common tools to send notifications around. Where is this data coming from again? Is uh, Are you pulling it from port stats on Onos or directly from the devices? Uh, so the, the device through Volta is uh, pushing some uh, statistics uh, into the volta.kpi topic on okay. Kafka, and I'm just picking them, uh, them up. All right, we can't thanks. do stuff from Onos yet because uh, Onos uh, stats depend on Volta sending those stats through the open flow protocol to Onos. Uh, and that in turn depends on Volta storing those stats in STD, uh, which we blocked because, um, you know, because of the issue of uh, ever increasing STD. Uh, right. We were going to, I thought uh, Volta only had to actually publish the last one, so it didn't have to store every. Uh, query, it just needs to store the, the last stats. But has that, that already happened? Issue. Has that change happened? Or? I, I don't, I don't, I agree. I don't think it's happened yet, but I, I just want to make sure my understanding was correct, really, there. But yeah, so actually, actually, some of that, actually, some of that code is actually in review right now. And typically, the for PM intervals, I don't think the Volta will store any of those at all. It'll just report them when they occur. All right. Thanks, Chip. That makes sense. Thanks. Then we'll incorporate that, and then we'll be able to pull stuff from uh, Onos as well. Um, uh, do we also have phone ports over here? Right. Uh, we have stats on phone ports. Uh, yeah, so we are collecting a bunch of stuff. We are now uh, displaying only the NNI port, uh, but we can just do. Uh, and make a new query to sum the byte total uh, uh, port type is phone. Uh, 
um, and group them by uh, device ID. And so we we are collecting the data in the format that Prometheus want them. Uh, and and once we have the data as time series, the, the query language is pretty flexible and let us uh, get all the information uh, that we want. Uh, if you wanted to get a different query, if you want the details for this particular device and see how every phone port uh, is uh, uh, is doing, we can just query for that particular device ID. Uh, I think there is something wrong in my query, but okay, we can see all the uh, all the stats for the port on that particular uh, device ID. So, eight port ports? Uh, oh, wait. Some of them are in an iPod. So, one. Yeah, it's showing all the ports. It eight is. Port ports two uh, it is like five and three. No, you're right, six and two. So that's basically whatever both is putting on yeah. uh, the gas loads. Yeah, I'm just reading the, the format that Volta is uh, is pushing. Uh, I know that there are plans to change that format, so uh, I didn't actually put too much time in formatting the data. I think the, uh, the interesting thing here was to demonstrate that we can uh, just collect the raw data and then have a mechanism to aggregate them and analysis and make sense out of them. And push them forward to and an external them. OS. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah one, once we have them in a storage, we can do uh, basically whatever we need with them. And, and this is a pretty common tool, so uh, anyone that has different needs to see different uh, statistics and different information can just write his own query and his own dashboard and his own alarms and, and get the information that he needs. So is there uh, any question? Thanks, Matteo. Any, any questions? Just we're going to get the recording of the, the demos. <laughs> yeah, so this will we'll get this posted on the on YouTube. We've got a SIBA channel on YouTube. Um, if that's what if that's what you were asking, I was. Thank you. Uh, demos looked great, by the way. Just my personal opinion. Yeah, it's it's really nice. So, I'm always asking, what about the other thing? Where are things stand with, with Elk Stack? We still uh, we are still working on that. Uh, I I don't exactly know how long it will be uh, before we can demonstrate something for the, the event, but uh, it's the it's the next step on the F cup stuff. Great, great. All right. Um, is there anything else? I think the plan for next week is to hold the meeting over a Jira work screen and um, try to make sure we don't have too many gaps and a, a great opportunity if you're looking for something to do to get involved as well. So I have a general question that uh, I saw some uh, some work going on in Volta on the alarm uh, format. Uh, does that cover also the um, these um, statistics that we are sending over Kafka, or um, it is completely separated from that? Uh, this is publishing the alarm information over Kafka. I don't think it has anything to do with the stats. The stats okay. Are separate yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, there's currently another one in review for the PM stats, and it's just the initial implementation. So what we want to do is 
probably coordinate some of the counter names and the behaviors, you know, maybe to match closely match what you've already done, just so you don't have to re-engineer a lot of your work. But that'll be coming out this week. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll get in touch with, with you offline, but uh, the, the format in which we expose the data is not really important. I just I added something together to demonstrate that we could, uh, we could read that. Okay, that's great. Okay, I guess we call it a day. Thanks, everybody. We'll get the, the video posted as soon as we can. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. That was great. Bye.